Morning all, day two. We're about to leave the Clannery Hotel up here in Letterkenny. Now yesterday was the hottest day I think of the year so far here in Ireland and the rooms didn't have any aircon. So I need to drink about, well, 10 litres of water just to replace what I lost in sweat last night. Um, anyway, we had a brilliant night's worth of crack here. Uh, what a super, super bunch of lads. Um, we're all really enjoying this. They love the cars up here in Donegal and their motorbikes, as do we. So join me after the sting and we'll, uh, we'll depart for day two. You okay, boys? Good day. Show good of day. hands, show of hands. Clean team, clean team. No points were had last night. It was all very nice and quiet, and everybody went to bed early. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, all bikes are started up. Following Daryl. I love that Daryl's on the uh, the VFR there. Gorgeous bike, and uh, Daryl's old school. And uh, there's a lot to be said for it because we got here yesterday. Daryl has all of his uh, directions, just like uh, we used to do, all written out and uh, placed on the top of his uh, tank bag. Uh, <laughs> so he's not risking his uh, phone battery going flat or his GPS failing or taking us the wrong route. He has it all researched and uh, we got here with uh, pinpoint accuracy last night. I love that. God, it's hot again, lads. See, look at this. The 2x2 two two formation is happening naturally now. Busy roads. What's the time? It's just before 9 o'clock, Friday morning. I think we're all fully fueled. Yes, we are, because we did that last night before we came to the hotel. Because some bright spark said we wouldn't be bothered to do it this morning. We'd probably end up having to stop before we wanted to just to refuel so we're all very sensible here on this trip I think it's a, a real good sign of our age <laughs> and we're off day two of the jigsaw grand tour just realized I forgot to put my sunglasses on so hey ho feels like we could be riding in Spain here so uh, our route today, uh, we're heading to Ross Common first of all. Hold on a second, I'll put the visor down because uh, I don't want a stone going in my eye. So yeah, we're heading to Ross Common first of all, uh, and then after that we're heading to Galway. Um, after that we're heading. Uh, this is all down the west coast of Ireland, by the way. Uh, I'll show you a map as we go, and uh, we're heading to Limerick after that, then uh, to Tralee in County Kerry, then from Tralee we're uh, gonna leg it down to Cork which is where we're staying tonight so massive amount of mileage today um, we're all replenished lovely breakfast lots of water on board as well so we're all good and we were very sensible last night so it's always nice to be riding bikes with uh, an older and a little bit more sensible <laughs> uh, generation because we know what today uh, entails of how hot it's going to be today folks I actually dressed a lot better today <laughs> than yesterday um, I literally struggled to tear the clothes off myself last night uh, because they were just saturated so I uh, underneath my textile jacket today I just have the orange jigsaw um, 
t-shirt. I don't have uh, any skins or anything like that. No thermal liners. They're all packed away in the in the panniers. Nice to know I do have them, though, just in case. But I can feel the airflow. I've opened all the vents as well. Don't think I've ever opened the vents on this jacket. I've owned it for like three years. <laughs> so I can feel a nice breeze coming in now. I'm very comfortable. And of course I am sitting on this uh, triple black R1200 GS. It's a nice place to be. I'm very happy, actually. There you go now. <laughs> That's just set me up for the day. It's like an assurance thing when I tell myself, yeah, I'm comfortable, I'm very happy. Ready for the day ahead. Mind you, as always, and murder a coffee. In case you didn't see the first episode of this Grand Tour, um, tune in to it, actually. It'll uh, set up the framework for this episode quite nicely. So just to recap, Jigsaw is... Uh, a charity aimed at uh, youth mental health. Uh, so, ideally, it's uh, early intervention. Um, the outreach centres, which is what we're visiting over these three days, uh, you can pop into any one of them around the country, um, or you can have a one-to-one -one Zoom call, and uh, you can also just pick up the phone, good old-fashioned way as well. And uh, the the idea is, well, I always say Jigsaw aim to put the pieces together, back together and uh, complete the picture and set uh, set you off on a much happier life it's, it's like you know giving you the building blocks really it's an incredible service i know if jigsaw had been around when i was a teenager there would have been many many lives saved and that really does lead me on to say like all of this we're doing i think i've mentioned this before but I, I, everything we're doing over these three days if it goes so far as to save a life, ultimately, or even make somebody feel better about themselves, just one person, then all of this has been worth it. Put the money aside. To me, awareness and uh, intervention is more important than money. I know it can't happen without money, because a lot of the people who work for Jigsaw are volunteers as well. And then, uh, you know, building these outreach centres isn't cheap as well, and running them as well. I mean, the price of energy here in Ireland has gone through the roof. I don't know what it's like where you are. But if all of this just helps one person, then to me, job done. Now we're starting to come into some lovely scenery here. the trees here at the base of the mountains looks like we're in the Rockies the Irish Rockies <laughs> ah this is very pretty lads I've just realized you know um, when I'm with a group of lads uh, certainly in Ireland uh, everybody says lads they address you as lads whether you're whether you're a female or a male it doesn't matter you're a lad Ah oh, no, come on lads, <laughs> group of girls, how are you lads? <laughs> it's just another one of those uh, Irishisms, as I call them, I love them, you know. <laughs> um, it's as good as saying grand, because everything's grand here in Ireland. <laughs> Did you not know that? Sure it's grand. <laughs> I, like, I was sweating buckets last night in that hotel room with no air condition. Went down this morning to meet the lads for breakfast, I said, Jesus. What did you think of the room, lads? No air condition. Ah, sure, it's grand. <laughs> it's a great way to be, isn't it? Great way to be. I love it. Ooh. What's happening, Tony? Well, she's burnt, I'd say, 100 millilitres of oil so far. Of the finest W, 20W50. Give her a little shot of it there. So, since we departed yesterday? Since we departed yesterday, yeah. She burns about a litre every 2,000 kilometres. And have you got spare? I certainly do. So, it's catching. Ken, you're checking your oil as well, are you? Yeah, it's the kind of nature of the bike, um, I'll let you know. It's an old bike. It's, 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 uh, it's about the same size as my waist. It's about a 28, you know. <laughs> what are you laughing at? It's the truth. It's about a 28. In my mind, I have a 28-inch waist. But 
in reality, this is a 28-year-old bike. And it needs oiling up now and again. It needs, you know, as, as, as I say in many aspects of my life, everything in moderation except lubrication. <laughs> oh, thank God I just finished my pastry. And there it is, Ben Bulbin. What a beautiful sight that is. That's uh, Ireland's very own Table Mountain. I always love travelling down the west coast and taking a look at that and do you know what, every single time I see that mountain it changes because of the light on it. There's, uh, there's no finer sight when we have a bit of snow in the winter here and you can see the snow lying on the top of the mountains, just outstanding. <laughs> I think uh, nearly every artist uh, in Ireland who messes about with watercolours or acrylics or even oils has painted Bel Ben Bulbin at some stage. Glen of Horseshoe went there last year on the RS660. That was a great day out. I couldn't believe the landscape. It's a glacial valley. It was just incredible. Oh man. Now we're talking. And as we're riding past Ben Bulbin, it seems to have magically changed shape. Obviously it hasn't. Uh, it's just the angle that we're on, but looks like a totally different mountain there, the further south of Travelling Pass. Not the best light over there today, but you get the idea. lately been saying in all my videos that I'm trying to take a little bit more time to stop and savour the view rather than just capturing everything on camera to bring it home to put in a video you know just take a few moments out and appreciate that he says riding straight past beautiful landscape but I have to I have to keep up with the, the lads yeehaw we're on the motorway and the breeze is fabulous Oh, I needed that. We're dropping down through Sligo at the moment. Next stop, Roscommon. Sligo is a great town for a night out. There's a pub here called... Uh, Don't Shoot the Crows, I think, or the Crows. I think it is Don't Shoot the Crows. Uh, and I was up there 15 years ago or something, singing um, with a, just a group of musicians who apparently get together on a regular basis, but they didn't have a singer this particular night. Um, people were asking around, can anybody bail out a few tunes? Of course, yours truly. Never wanted to decline an offer like that, so I got up. I was up for the whole night actually singing, and the barman came over. I was with work, so um, the people I was working with were out with me as well. The barman came over and said, um, if you carry on singing, I'll buy yourself and your work party, whatever you want to drink, for the entire night. Uh, <laughs> so that's when, that's when I used to have a, an okay voice. I don't think I have the, uh, the, the voice anymore, haven't sung in ages, but it was one memorable night. It was just an, an incredible night. These are lovely roads to ride, actually. Um, it's windy inside my helmet here, so sort of being buffeted around a little bit just because it's so open where we are at the moment. I hope you can hear me all right. Pretty little town. Oh, I can smell fish and chips. It's only 20 past 11 in the morning. I can't be hungry yet. This is lovely. Let me through. Oh, look at the trailer full of turf. 
that's the stuff I'm always saying I love the smell of whenever I ride around uh, Ireland, especially in the autumn. So we're in Roscommon Town. It's very pretty as well, isn't it? Can't help but notice those rain clouds, folks. Can't complain, really. Alrighty. Time to get another photograph taken. Yeah. Lovely to see you, Karen. I'll You're very and, welcome. I'll try and keep up if I don't. Don't worry about uh, me. And, uh, what bike are you on, Karen? Hard, what bike are you on? I'm on a 250cc Yamaha Dragstar. Fantastic. Yeah. Great Lovely. stuff. Nice. Cruiser. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, I used to be on a bike like this. I used to have a guzzy and oh. um, I could only get one foot on the floor because I'm small. <laughs> so I thought I'm a bit dangerous, so I go for the low bikes now. Well, lovely to have you along, Karen. Yeah, yeah. And we'll, we'll take a nice handy route now to Galway. Absolutely, We've got a bit yeah. of lunch booked for uh, on Pookin in Galway. Everyone, can I interest anyone in a rich tea, Mickey? Uh, yes, no please. Okay, yes, please. Cool. I'll be right back. Any chance of a cup of tea to go with of the rich course, tea, Mickey? Of course, we can do that. We can do that. <laughs> this might be a bit of a longer stop than scheduled. But it would be nice. Daryl doesn't know this, but when we were leaving the hotel this morning, this is the fella who writes all of the directions down and has them on top of his sort of tank bag. Daryl, it's old school. <laughs> it is, it is old school, but I, I, I'm, I'm sort of navig I'm, I'm transitioning between paper to the new sat nav that I have, so I'm not fully confident in the sat nav yet, so I'm still with the paper, but between the two of them, you generally know where you're going. Well, you've gotten us, you've gotten us to all of the hubs so far, <laughs> safe and sound, and you've managed to build in a tea break at this one as well. And, Very important. And, and a lunch break as well. We're all happy. We're all good, happy. good. Glad to hear the punters are happy. <laughs> okay, we're off. We have a new rider on board. Thanks again, folks. Bye. New rider on board as well. I think Karen was the name. She's joining us uh, to Galway, I believe. Pathfinder. <laughs> I can feel the rain. Galway now. The rain has started. Rain has well and truly arrived actually. There's Pathfinder. We'll follow him. There's Tony. The, uh, we've got a couple of lads from H91 Bikers joining us for lunch there. They've uh, raised a, a load of money for Jigsaw as well. Good to meet them. And uh, we're now heading to Limerick. Sorry about the rain on the lens, if there is any. We're uh, getting a guard or escort as well out of Galway City. Be careful with the roads. They even look slippy, don't they? It's been dry for so long. Had a lovely jalapeno burger there. 
just to put so, uh, some extra spice into my exhaust, <laughs> as one of the lads said. <laughs> so even though we've got uh, a guard our escort, the guy in the van here, there's no way he was letting the rest of us through. I saw Tony shaking his head at him in front there. That was a welcome break. The only problem was we were sat in uh, a pub which was really dark. Gorgeous little pub actually, I forget the name of it, but it was really dark. Um, which tends to tire me out, especially with a belly full of food. Anyway, nothing like a blast of fresh air to keep us going. But the rain's hurting my face here. I'm going to shut the visor. Beautiful ZX-10 that, isn't it? Great colour. 08, the registration plate is. Right, I think we'll slip in here to the left. I think the other lads on the CBR 650 are behind me, if I'm not mistaken. It's a great hotel, by, by the way, that G Hotel. Now, the guard's got his blue light on, so we're good. So, as expected, I have a bit of a dilemma. I have 37 kilometres left in the tank, and Limerick is 55 kilometres away. Um, so, it doesn't take uh, a genius to work out the maths and that. So, I'm going to have to split from the ranks. We've, in fairness, we're already split because of the traffic coming out of Galway. So, half the group are somewhere behind me, and I can't see them at all. Obviously, three riders in front of me. Now, we're not on intercoms. This is the problem. So, I'm going to have to split in the hope that they realise that I've split. I do have the location for Limerick somewhere in my phone. So, I shall uh, go and fill up with petrol and then uh, hopefully meet up with the rest of the group in Limerick. Now, I need a sign for services to be happening quite quick. Because I know that 36 kilometres in this tank doesn't really mean 36 kilometres. That means about 24. It's about two thirds of what it actually says when it gets down low. And look at that, as if by magic, there's a sign for services. So I am going to make the executive decision and split from the ranks here. I hope they realise. <laughs> it's brilliant. The wild geese. Okay, boys. Letters. Yeah, Tony's just realised that I've turned left. Do you know what that is? Bloody annoying. When you take the turn off the motorway and then the, there is no sign. For services, so guesswork now. Jeez. Ah. I'm following my nose here. Maybe that's why the uh, sculpture of the wild geese was in the field there, because it leads you on a wild goose chase when it tells you to turn off for the services. Just approaching Limerick City. Isn't it gorgeous? Look at the hanging baskets on the bridge as well. Beautiful. It's a weird uh, <laughs> riding along without the lads. I feel as though I'm on one of my um, own trips away, you know.
I hope they're there. I'm six minutes away. I really do miss the intercom uh, situation at times like this. So I think the air code is telling me it's literally around here. Have to go around a one-way system, I think, to get to it. There they are. Brilliant. I heard them. So um, I wonder how I can... I might have to ride down, down the pavement here. I'll go around the one-way system. Anyway, they're there. <laughs> That's great news! <laughs> they looked as happy to see me as I was to see them. <laughs> That's brilliant. Aha! There they are. Where's the bikes? Oh, over there. Um, how on earth? I'll just let the traffic lights, I see. Fantastic. I love it when a plan comes together. Brilliant. I had to split off. I saw I saw you watching me as I split off. I had to go and get petrol. I, I was down to 20 kilometers, but I knew, I, I knew you would know that. So you'd have missed the intercoms. Yeah. Look there, Patrick Doyle Murray. There's a lovely background there for picture. Perfect. Oh, I'm tired, man. I am tired. So, uh, we're splitting ranks again. There's four of us going on to Tralee now, and three riders are going straight to Cork. Um, they're feeling the, uh, the tiredness a bit, so they're dead right to say they'd rather get to Cork rather than uh, risk uh, another, I think it's another two hours, well, four hours in total. So, if you're feeling tired, don't be going an extra four hours out your way. See you later, lads. So hopefully uh, they'll still be up when we get there tonight. Hope it's not too late by the time we get there tonight. I do love Limerick. We've had some great times down here. Great nights out. I say that with a sense of divilment in me, don't I? And I'd be right to. <laughs> Going right. Pathfinder nearly slipped up there. Get ourselves out of Limerick. And uh, we have to go through a gorgeous little town called um, Adair. Thatched cottages and all that, but it's always a bottleneck. So it, our journey tonight really depends um, on the traffic in Adair. On uh, what time we will get back to, uh, to our hotel. Obviously a different hotel tonight, so we have the whole thing of checking in and all that. We're not going down there, lads. <laughs> Pathfinder slipped up. <laughs> that's, that's one round of drinks he has to get. He's out of it. The GS has a really good turning circle on it, I've just realised. Ah! <laughs> he's led us into a housing estate. Now, maybe his Daryl should be thinking about going to uh, straight to Cork as well. <laughs> ah, that's two rounds of drinks now, Daryl! <laughs> Funny thing is, Daryl was just telling me how impressed he was with his uh, Garmin sat nav. <laughs> I don't think he'd be saying that at the next stop somewhere. 
What was that you were saying about the sat nav? <laughs> <laughs> The paper's much better, Boy Scouts. <laughs> so we're just coming into a day now. And like I said, traffic is crazy trying to get through a day, but a lot easier when you're on two wheels. We've already avoided um, a lot of it. Sorry, itchy nose, hay fever's creeping in again. This place on the left here with the big huge gates is uh, Adair Manor. Just been voted the best hotel in Ireland. If the entrance was anything to go by. It's beautiful. And no doubt there's a very hefty premium to stay there because of the entrance gates. <laughs> I've filmed in there a few times actually. It is an incredible place. I've actually stayed there, coming to think of it as well. Not at my own expense, I hasten to add. Actually, we're doing a lot better than I thought with this traffic. I'm just coming into the town now. Or is it a village? I always get confused about that. That's beautiful, isn't it? I've actually eaten there. The Oak and Apple. I've eaten in that one as well, the 1826 restaurant. I would have been quite happy to sit there a little bit longer and look at it there. Now there's Damien, one of our ground crew. Where's he going? There's Mark. Those lads are looking after us uh, with a van just in case we need anything. And they're carrying all the excess luggage as well. Great guys. Had a great crack with them at dinner last night as well. And if you want to make your pub attractive looking, stick a, a vintage car outside of it, because that does the job, doesn't it? That looks brilliant. <laughs> Oh, nice GT4 in front of us there. Well, we got through it uh, in record time there, we really did. It wouldn't uh, happen that quick in a car. Ah, he's Pathfinder's pulling in. He's only just had a fill of petrol. I wonder if there's something wrong. Looks like we're meeting up with another rider. On a Triumph Tiger as well. Oh, well, he's got a Grand Tour sticker on his pannier, so I presume he's riding some of the way with us. <laughs> this is just brilliant community spirit, this. Love this. <laughs> There are the uh, the Kerry Mountains in the distance. We haven't got far to go now until we're in Tralee. That was a good road all the way down here. Actually, most of it was motorway. When I go off and do my own trips and tours and little adventures. <laughs> try and avoid motorways as uh, as much as I can. So it's weird we're doing completely the opposite, obviously, because we've got to cover so much ground within such a short time. So it goes against everything my uh, motorcycle brain stands for <laughs> in many ways. 
I'm so much enjoying this because I'm in my happy place. I'm on two wheels. I'm riding around Ireland, taking in the beautiful sights. And uh, I've just met an amazing bunch of lads as well. And this is like therapy for me. And then, and then the cause of this trip as well is also about therapy. Some more roadside sculptures there. I forget what those ones were. So it's all very fitting. And I suppose each and every one of us is uh, on a bit of a personal journey with this. I found out a little bit out about that last night when we were sat in the restaurant of the hotel, but but obviously yeah, what happens around the table stays at the table. Just coming into Tralee Town. Must be something on at the stadium there tonight. The sun is just uh, starting to lower as well. What's the time actually? God, it's 25 past 7. We'll have to get this uh, photo stop done fairly quick because we've still a fair old trek after this down to Cork, which is where we're staying tonight. And here we are, Jigsaw Kerry. Now, please let us in. Thank you very much. They weren't too keen on stopping there. The lads are getting very versed as to where the bikes should be for the best photographs. Which is well impressive. Nearly as impressive as our synchronised riding. So I think this is a second last stop of the evening. Because we, um, well uh, there was talk about maybe just doing the stop when we get to Cork later on. Uh, we'll do the jigsaw hub tomorrow morning rather than tonight. Depends on time I suppose. Did you enjoy that, Tom? Very much so, yeah. Absolutely that, fantastic. That was your first spin out? Uh, well, yeah, well, 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 I've been spinning all day now, but <laughs> that was my first out spin out with real men. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and how <laughs> was it <laughs> to it was be brilliant. with real men? It was absolutely outstanding. <laughs> Very much so. I really enjoyed it. You're travelling down the cork after this with us? Absolutely, yeah. Well, then you'll yeah. see how real men do it. I am buying the first round. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be going to bed after that. Well, that's okay. Especially me because I'm a cabin man. For an hour if you, wish. you can certainly do How are you, Damien? Yeah, not too bad. I think we've done about 900 kilometres so far on the journey. Today being the big one, uh, we've done about 500, 500 and odd kilometres today alone. So uh, by the time we get to Cork, we'll be probably up to about 700 kilometres. Like so, longest stretch. We knew it was coming. Some, a few of us had to drop off, like that. The, you know, the, the distance was catching up on them and. And then we're picking up, we're picking up the rest of you. We got to Kerry, thank God. I was borderline tempted to drop off myself, Dave. Like, I'm like oh, will I, won't I, will I, won't I? But uh, I'm glad, like, you know, Daryl put the word in. He said, it's a photo challenge. You have to challenge yourself. We did, and we're here. We've no choice now but to go back to Cork. Here, here. I think there's one word for us, actually. Would I be right in saying that we're hardcore? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Full on hardcore. Well, I'm going with it anyway. <laughs> That's been brilliant. It's been a cracking day. A great day yesterday. Another great day today. Great roads. Scenery in Ireland. Why would you go anywhere else in the world when you have roads like this? The lads are great. Led by Daryl. Damien behind. Everyone stays together. Uh, every Jigs office we've been to. Reception's been great. The welcome's been great. What more can I say? I can't say great anymore because I've said that about 10 times. Brilliant day. Look forward to tomorrow now. So we've just turned over a thousand kilometers. It's after nine o'clock at night now. The light is gone, and so am I. I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm fading quickly. So uh, my sat nav says we have just over half an hour to go until uh, we reach the hotel tonight. What a day! Really 
serious day now. I know we've covered a lot of ground, but that was uh, always going to be on the agenda when we left this morning. But to think we've pretty much travelled from uh, the top of the country to the south uh, in a day. I'd love to know. I should have measured how many. Well, actually, I can probably work it out. I think we've done 600 kilometres today. Now, in a country as small as Ireland, that is pretty much the length of it. Great day. I can tell my voice is getting a bit croaky, which is what happens when I get tired. I'm actually, I have to say, I'm delighted we went to Tralee. And uh, it was also great that the other lads realised that they shouldn't because they were too tired. Uh, and I don't blame them. I think they absolutely made the correct choice. And... Uh, much better to be safe. Somebody told me years ago, um, when I was always rushing and late to be at places and everything, he says, listen, you've got to stop rushing just to be on time. He says, uh, rather be called Davy Late than the late Davy. And uh, those words ring true, you know, so many times in my life. And uh, I was delighted that the lads um, decided to go on to Cork because they were feeling too tired. What a day though, what a day. Now my sat nav is saying the hotel is just down the road here. I hope it's a nice one. I really need uh, a bit of relaxation in nice surroundings tonight, I really do. I'm not saying there was anything wrong with last night's, but I need uh, a, a bit of comfort again tonight, perhaps more so. Um, I'm tired and emotional, so I need a big hug by a big, lovely, soft double bed. Is this it? The Kingsley Hotel, this is it. Uh, how to get into it? My left here. Oh, wow. This looks a bit posh. Well done, Damien. <laughs> you slept in there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to slip in even more. I'm going to go around, uh, around there. I think I'll be all right here, won't it? I'll, I'll be all right there. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're good. So, obviously, the other lads... Uh, I bet you any money they're in the bar. I just have a feeling... The other lads will be in a bar. And we got there before the other lads as well. Before the second half of our group. We split again. The other lads are on garments. Uh, Damien and myself are using Google Maps on our phones. So that was a great test to see who gets you there quicker. Uh, Google Maps won. <laughs> right, I'm going to end the day, folks. Uh, get checked in, freshened up, and uh, see you again tomorrow for the final day. Go man. What can I say? Send that one if you don't look at it. Prices, prices. You can't put a price on things.